Good Tuesday evening, everybody. Live and direct from House Onik, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik with your quick weather update called Weather Overtime. This is our online video weather blog, giving you the opportunity to learn more about what's going on with the weather across the Mid-South area, keeping you updated with what's going on throughout the Mid-South into the next couple of days, especially as we see more possibilities of problems with thunderstorms and severe weather again. We'll set up the situation for you coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on that. Once again, Again, as we head out throughout the area tonight, there are, again, some areas of concerns into the Mid-South where we see, again, uh, some locations picking up some problems where traffic is concerned this evening, back down mainly around to the area of Tuggle Road, Shelby Drive on Lamar, 78, 22, whatever designation you want to give that. And also, again, the flyover, everybody outbound at this time, the ramp from Sam Cooper eastbound just before 6 p.m. and Sam Cooper Boulevard westbound is looking, again, at 10 miles miles per hour or so. Also from the area around East Parkway, close to the zoo area, Overton Park, a little bit of problems there. For some reason, uh, Poplar Avenue, very much on the slow side, 10 miles per hour or less at this time. A little bit of a slowdown going on from I-240 from Little Rock passing up to the north around Fraser, 25 miles per hour there. And it looks like an accident at I-40 East at Austin P and Jackson Avenue, where we're seeing again some problems and slowdowns in those locations. Also a bit of a slowdown right now between Perkins and Mount Moriah. Looks like, again, that's on the eastbound lanes, about 25 to 30 miles an hour. More than likely outbound traffic going all the way up to around the area of portions of I-240. Let's see if the camera is working in that location. Looks like everything's moving along decently well. Traffic on the heavy side at I-240 and Sam Cooper. And seeing, okay, we've got uh, one accident. There's the I-240 eastbound Lamar accident being reported uh, at that location there. So that's where we've been seeing, again, some of the situational problems there. Let's take a look and see what's going on atmospheric-wise. Back to the west of us, we have a large dip in the jet stream, which is our latest burst of energy. We're inside that green circle right there inside the Mid-South area. Zooming in to show you a little bit more about that, we're seeing, again, that large area of low pressure tracking its way across the Rockies. These storm systems, as they go upwards into the atmosphere, as they cross the Rockies, they don't have much room to maneuver. They're way up in the atmosphere, and they do a very good job getting kind of squashed upwards out there. Once they move in off the Rockies and into the Plain States, as they get out into, say, anywhere between Texas and the Dakotas, they have a lot more room to maneuver. That means a lot more energy. And that could mean a lot more problems for parts of the area. And we're seeing some severe weather potential problems out there for tonight. Mostly, again, that's where the moisture is. The water vapor satellite, the gray colors around the mid-south area, showing, again, less in the way of moisture than what we're getting back up to around areas close to the panhandles and into the Great Plains states. That is where the cloud cover and the moisture is a little bit more prevalent. You can also see more about that on the visible, visible satellite picture with, again, scattered clouds around the mid-south area and picking up again a lot more in the way of cloud cover out across portions of the Rockies. So much of what we're seeing right now is again going to be sticking around out that direction. Here in the Mid-South we've got just moisture hanging around, light moisture for the most part, and that should be continuing throughout the course of the next couple of days. Absolutely nothing showing up on radar. The clear air mode as it's called picking up again dust and moisture in the atmosphere, but nothing showing up in the way of anything involving precipitation. There's no rain, there's no thunderstorms, there's nothing like that at this point in time, so decently quiet. If you'd like to see our radar, please go to wreg.com slash weather if you'd like to get more information about what's going on with our radar section, and it's interactive, so you can zoom in, zoom out, you can place uh, lightning strikes on it, you can get tropical information if you zoom out to like the Gulf of Mexico and over to around the area of the East Coast states. You can put earthquakes on there, clouds and satellites, all kinds of great stuff available. Again, that's at wreg.com slash weather for more information on that. What do we got coming our way? Well, as of right now, we're looking again at fairly quiet conditions in the Mid-South. Much of what we're going to be seeing as we head into the next couple of days is going to be this storm system out across the Rockies. By tomorrow morning, it's going to be launching its way into the plain states, interacting with all that moisture coming up from the Gulf. So rain showers from the Gulf Coast all the way up into the plain states, perfect timing. 
for all that wheat planting going on across much of the Midwest and corn planting for that matter. Getting that storm system a little bit closer to us by Wednesday afternoon and evening. The dark red colors around the Arklatex area and down to around the Gulf Coast. That's the possibility of strong thunderstorms, possibly even severe weather coming on through. And it's going to be Wednesday night into Thursday as that system lifts up and into the areas that energy moves its way across the Mid-South, interacting with that moisture coming up from the Gulf of Mexico as those two systems interact. That's where we're going to get the best possibility of these thunderstorms moving on through and then heading out of the picture by about Thursday night. So this whole system is in motion. It's on the way. Not only that, but if you take a look out toward the West Coast states, We've got even more activity heading our direction. There might be yet of more chances of showers and thunderstorms coming on through as we go into around the early part of next week, late during the weekend. We'll talk more about that in your forecast coming up here in just a little bit. But suffice it to say, we've got some active conditions out there in the next few days. Immediately, the map from the National Weather Service, not much of anything going on. Dense fog advisory into early this morning, but as the storm system makes its way over the panhandles of Texas, swoops into all that moisture, that's where we're going to have a lot more problems coming on through. Now, severe weather potential for tonight, nothing for the Mid-South area. The light green color indicates, again, where we see just a generic risk of thunderstorms. Could be some of that activity starting up into tomorrow, which is why the Storm Prediction Center has us in that category. The red color right there that you see indicates a moderate threat of severe weather from southwestern Oklahoma down into north central parts of Texas. So Amarillo, Lubbock, southwest of Oklahoma City, that's where there's going to be a target zone for later on tonight and could be some pretty nasty conditions out that direction. So if you're heading that way past Oklahoma City tonight or early tomorrow, that's something you could run into. Tomorrow, the threat for the Mid-South area includes, again, the potential for, again, an enhanced risk of severe weather. That's the orange color that you see. That's the highest target bullseye area for severe weather, and that's going to be making its way closer to us. National Weather Service in Memphis showing again Wednesday night, the 29th, we see the threat really start to increase as it goes a little bit closer to us. The threat's going to be highest back off to the west of us. That enhanced risk moves in late Wednesday and into early on Thursday. So Wednesday night here, and this is what it's going to be looking like very early Thursday morning. That enhanced risk, the highest risk possible for portions of the Mid-South will be moving through much of the area, basically from the boot heel south into middle parts of Mississippi. And we continue again to see the potential for problems out there. Notice again on the far Let's see on your screen, that's your right-hand side looking at this. Again, the threat level from the National Weather Service indicates wind and hail going to be the main threat out there, but the tornadic threat really goes up as we go into tomorrow. So take a look at Wednesday once again. Starting off late during the evening, we see the potential for showers and thunderstorms. Wednesday evening, moving this direction after midnight. And then as we get into around Thursday, we see that threat continue into the Mid-South. Large hail, damaging winds, the main thing, but we cannot rule out the possibility of tornadoes. Add to that, if there's enough energy in the atmosphere, we may see the possibility of some strong, what are called long track tornadoes that are on the ground for a long period of time and produced by supercell thunderstorms. These thunderstorms are much more powerful than normal type thunderstorms. We could see, again, the activity increase over the course of the next couple of days. And this forecast that you're looking at right here from the National Weather Service will be changing over the next several days. So this is something to really keep advised on. Again, you've probably seen the banners on TV that says the storm struck without warning. This right here is your warning. This is a way to keep updated on what's going on out there. Let's take a look at the extended forecast from the Storm Prediction Center. Again, we're showing the yellow areas showing up when they do. Days four, right about Thursday through Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and into next Monday and Tuesday. Basically, the threat leaves us into tomorrow afternoon, evening into tomorrow night, and then another possibility of thunderstorms over Oklahoma and Texas down toward Texas and the Gulf Coast as that system moves through. Hopefully that won't be taking more of a swerve toward us, but we will be watching that to be very certain on there. Here's what we're looking for into the rest of the evening tonight. Uh, temperatures for today have been quite gorgeous back into around the upper 70s to lower 80s. Temperatures tonight will be back in the lower 50s. We shouldn't be seeing too much in the way of thunderstorms starting tonight. High temperatures tomorrow with all that sunshine and those warm, southerly breezes coming our way. We're going to be seeing temperatures easily 
back into around the lower to mid 80s. Now, chances of precipitation start back to the west and move this way throughout the course of the rest of the day. It looks like we won't see too much in the way of showers early, early, but by Wednesday afternoon, more chances of showers and possibly some thunderstorms coming on through, and then more chances of rainfall again Wednesday night overspreading the area into very early Thursday morning and then heading into around Thursday morning around rush hour everybody gets rainfall and that'll be sticking around it looks like into about probably the afternoon and evening hours high temperatures on Thursday not doing too bad, maybe a little cooler than Wednesday back in the lower to mid-70s. Heading into around Thursday night, the rain chances dwindle slightly, and then low temperatures back into around the mid to upper 50s to lower 60s. Heading into Friday, temperatures will respond accordingly back in the 60s, and then chances of rain it looks like will be moving their way out of the picture by early Friday morning and gone pretty much by lunchtime on Friday, so definitely good news on that. The forecast again for tonight, we don't have much in the way of showers or thunderstorms developing. The mediogram is what you're looking at here. This again gives sort of a bar graph idea as to what's going on. The red color in the bars indicates the chance of thunderstorms taking place. The green bars above that indicate the potential of just plain rainfall. Notice that really not much of anything gets going until about Wednesday morning. Then we see that slight possibility. Then as we go a little farther into the future, toward about sunset, that's where the possibility of thunderstorms really starts to ramp up by just a little bit more. And as we go even farther into the future, as we go from Wednesday evening through about early Thursday morning, that's going to be the main potential for the development of thunderstorms widespread across the Mid-South area. So we'll begin tomorrow kind of piecemeal, but then as we get into Thursday night, into Wednesday night, Thursday morning, that's where we see the best potential of those thunderstorms as that threat really begins to ramp up across much of the area and continuing to see again the possibility of some of those thunderstorms uh, becoming strong to severe. So this is something we'll be watching with a lot of interest at News Channel 3, so definitely want to stay tuned for more on that. How do you do that? Well, go to this website or that website that you see there, wreg.com slash weather. Or again, find out more through our social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, a lot of our reporters and anchors have Instagram posting so that you can take a look at what's going on there. But wreg.com slash weather is going to be the place to go to. Todd Demers will have more on his forecast bright and early tomorrow morning. And of course, Tim and Jim have their forecast tonight on News Channel 3 at 6 and into News Channel 3 at 10. So again, got to keep updated on this. This is something that you really do have to remember to keep well advised on. It's just that important, especially in this time of the year when severe weather could be a bit of a problem, even a life-threatening problem. So please keep it tuned to News Channel 3, and we'll keep you advised on that as we go throughout the next couple of days, either on air or online. Stay tuned to News Channel 3 on that. From the Home Office, I'm meteorologist Austin Onyx. Stay tuned for much more coming up from News Channel 3 throughout the course of the next few days as we have another round of severe weather on approach. Thanks for joining me for tonight's edition of Weather Overtime. <music>